recently on the channel, I made a video about adding storage to this Mac Mini M4, and the method I chose to show you was taking an external NVMe enclosure, in this case a 2230, we put a one terabyte drive in there, and we plugged it in and we tested out some speeds. Now this particular enclosure uses USB 4, and I got some questions in the comments asking about the differences in speed between this USB 4 enclosure and a true Thunderbolt enclosure. Well, to help me answer that question, the good people at Orico were nice enough to send me this Minimate external SSD. And this is designed specifically for the Mac Mini M4. This is a one terabyte drive inside here. It's a Thunderbolt interface with 40 gigabits of transfer speed. The design matches this M4 beautifully. And in this video, we're gonna set it up, test it out, and answer that question about speed. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and open up this box, check out the Minimate, and get it set up. All right, so inside the box is the Minimate drive itself, and then it's got an instruction manual, some instructions and some specifications and some precautions, and then it comes with two cables. First cable is this short little cable here, and it feels very high quality. We're gonna take this out of the bag in just a second and use it to hook it up, but it's also nice that on these little metal tips, and you can't see them, but it is got silk screened on there, the logo for 40 gigabits, so that's always nice. Help you remember that that's the right cable. And then also, it comes with a much longer cable here and remember this thing is designed for the Mac Mini but it can be used with a iMac, a MacBook Pro, MacBook Air. It can even be used with any kind of Windows PC or laptop so having that longer cable is nice because you might not be plopping this thing right on top of the Mac Mini M4. Now, as far as the design again can't go wrong with the Mac Mini looking design. They took a lot of design cues from Apple it looks like and that's never a bad idea. So we've got plenty of ventilation here on the bottom Around the back side, you can see you've got a vent coming out here. And then here's the interface again with the label for that 40 gigabits. And it looks like it's going to sit real nicely on there. Now, I've used several of these before with other Mac Minis. And whether you put them on top or put them below, they always kind of slide around a little bit. This one feels pretty solid. It's got some texture, of course. you got four big rubber feet here that make up a lot of surface area that help this thing stay put. And I've got no doubt it's going to stay put. Now, one thing that helps that also is the fact that you get this really short cable and not a heavy cable that might have come with one of the other ones I've used before that kind of pulled this thing off of the Mac Mini because the cable's so heavy. So I think this is a great design. Matches perfectly. And I think the next thing we need to do, take this little cable out and plug it in. All right, so I've got the cable installed. And as you can see from this angle, the cable is basically invisible. That's the nice thing about having a small cable like that. If aesthetics is something that's important to you, then that's definitely a plus for this. And I gotta tell you, the connectors on the end of this thing, I told you they were like a, a metal connector. They are the heaviest connectors I think I've ever seen on a cable, a computer interface cable like this. So I think that says a lot about the build quality of that cable. If you've used the old Thunderbolt 2 and Thunderbolt 1 cables, you know that if you broke one of those things, if it got flimsy or something, the connection would be bad, and those were very expensive. So having a high quality cable like this is a definite plus. So I've got it plugged in, so let me go ahead and switch over to the Mac desktop, and you can see it mounted already right up here in the top right corner as Orico. So let's go ahead and pull this up in disk utility. And as we look at the drive here, you can see, yes, it is one terabyte. These things come in sizes from 512 megabytes all the way up to four or eight terabytes, I believe. But this one terabyte is definitely gonna help out. And it recognized it right off the bat, and it's already formatted in XFAT format. Now, when we made the other SSD in the other video, I formatted it as APFS. I'm not sure if that's gonna have any difference in uh, speed, but we'll definitely test that out. So speaking of testing out the speed, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do some, what I call real world testing, and that's just grabbing some big files from the desktop, dragging them over to the drive, and just kind of getting a sense of how long it takes. You know, I'm not going to run a stopwatch or something. Just going to kind of feel it out. When you're doing your, you know, average day-to-day -day work, you're not stopwatching any kind of file transfers or anything. But you notice when something takes longer than it should. So that's what I do, just a regular field test. Now after we do that, I've got a disk speed utility that I can use to run some real benchmarks. And we'll play around with that too. But first things first, let's go ahead and just drag these three big YouTube files here into the drive and see how long it takes. So in my finder here on the left, I've got the Oracle drive 
already opened up. I'm just going to drag these three files here right from the desktop right into here and see how it goes. So this will be basically a write speed test and just like that before I can even say write speed test it is already done. Now how big is this? Let's go ahead and look at these files real quick. And we've got 3.21 and 2.2 so about six and a half gigabytes and those things just copied over like super quick. So let's go ahead and close these down and the next thing I'm going to do is just create a temporary folder on the hard drive and I'm going to drag these back from here back to that temporary folder and that will be basically a read speed. So let me get a folder set up. Alright so over on the right here I've got the files that I dragged over onto the Minimate drive and I'm going to go ahead and drag these right over to this temp folder. Three, two, one, go. And just like that about three seconds, four seconds, about the same time it took to copy them on there is the same time that it took to copy them back onto the internal SSD of the Mac Mini. Now I'll be the first to admit that this is not a very scientific test, but as far as dragging 6.5 gigabytes of files from one place to another, looks like it's just as quick as the internal drive, and that's really what you want. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing again with the other external drive that I created that's just a USB interface, and we'll just get a feel for those speeds as well. Alright, so over here on the left I've got a temp folder set up on that USB SSD drive that we created in that last video. So let me go ahead and grab these files here, and I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to drag them over onto this external drive here, and this will be basically like a write speed test. So three, two, one, go. And although it is quick, you can see, again, with this very non-scientific test, that there was a speed difference. Dragging over onto the Thunderbolt drive here, the Minimate, was about three seconds and dragging over on this USB drive was about six seconds or so. So now I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I'm going to drag these over onto the internal drive. So let me get that set up and I'll be right back. All right, so here we are again. On the right here is the three files that we just dragged onto that USB drive. On the left is a temp2 folder that I just created on the hard drive. So let's go ahead and drag those over. Three, two, one, go. And again, very fast, but not quite as fast as the Minimate. So you can definitely tell that there is both a read and a write different speed between the Thunderbolt interface and the USB interface, which is exactly what we'd expect, and it's exactly why you'd want to go with an interface like this Thunderbolt. So let me go ahead and set up a drive speed test, and we're going to look at the drive speed differences using this Blackmagic program. All right, so this is a program called Disk Speed Test and it's made by Blackmagic and it's not my favorite disk speed program but it works great on this Mac Mini so we're going to go ahead and do it. Now first thing I got set up here is just the internal SSD of the Mac Mini. So let's go ahead and hit this button to start. And it's just going to keep on cycling back and forth between read speed and write speed. And it does record everything in the columns but you gotta kind of look at it because it's constantly changing. So I'm just gonna read out some, I guess, ballpark numbers that I see here. And it looks like the write speed is averaging around 1350. The read speed a little bit quicker on 1900. And see the write speed now is 1600. And the read speed is up to 28, so it's constantly changing. But let's just call it like 1600 and maybe 2,000 on the read. Maybe a little bit quicker. So we'll go ahead and stop this. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the target drive of the USB drive. And we'll do the same thing. Let's just hit the start button here and kind of get a gist for the speeds. So right off the bat we're starting a little bit slower. Again, this is the USB drive that we created with a 2230 sized SSD. And it looks like there is a noticeable difference in speed. Not slow, definitely, but not quite as fast as the internal speed. Maybe half the speed or so. And again, that's to be expected. The drive itself 
is fast, but the interface that it's running on is not the fastest. So let's go ahead and stop this. And we'll go one more time. This time we're going to select the target drive is going to be at Minimate 1 terabyte. And let's start. And so far, we are flying a lot faster. In fact, it is noticeably faster than the internal drive. And as much as that shouldn't shock me, it does shock me a tiny bit. That's because I've been doing this a long time, and I've seen how slow external interfaces can be, but I'm very, very much impressed by the speed of this external drive. So let's go ahead and stop this test here. I'm satisfied with that. And let's have some final thoughts. So I think watching those tests is probably the best final thoughts that we can use in this case. The design of this thing is beautiful. It matches perfectly. The cable that comes with it is awesome. The speed of the disk is amazing. And it's just basically the way to go if you need external storage for your Mac Mini M4. Now I'm not going to say that it's never worth making a drive like this because it's still a valid way to do it. It still serves the purposes that we talked about in that video as far as being ultra portable, move it from computer to computer, carry it around in your backpack. But if you just need storage for your Mac Mini M4, this is definitely the way to go. So thank you again to Orico for sending this Minimate external SSD. I'll leave some links down below on where you can find it. Again, sizes from 512 gigabytes all the way up to eight terabytes. Blazing speeds, amazing design, awesome build quality. So go check it out. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them down in the comments below. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, I appreciate a thumbs up. That helps out the channel. Go check out the rest of the channel. I've got a lot of other stuff on there regarding Mac stuff and Mac Minis, MacBook Pros, and basically anything geeky on this channel. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. I appreciate you as always for watching. And until next time, peace out and geek out.